if the two roofs meet, have the exact same pitch, the line of intersection or the valley will always be 45 degrees. So if I have an 812 roof coming into an 812 roof, the yeah. intersection is 45 degrees. It's a one-to-one -one triangle, right? If they come in at 612, both of them, 45 degrees. Now we do get off of that if you have roofs that come in different angles. If I've got a 612 that meets an 812, this line will not be 45. It'll actually be up more like that. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to calculate that too. We'll just do it as an exercise. But first, let's finish our. We know where these two roofs meet, right? They meet right here and here. That's where the fascias meet all the way around. So if we draw 45 degree lines, where they intersect has to be where the ridge is intersecting. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the drawing. So this line right here is the edge on the downside. This line is the edge on this downside. So from right here, they're the same height. I should run 45 degrees this way. From right here, I should run 45 degrees this way. Where those two meet is where that roof is going to end. So to draw that, I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to do a line. And I'll just lock this guy in at 45 degrees. Throw it out here. Mirror it to the other side. <clears throat> or just redraw it, whatever you want. And trim it up. So those are your valleys. Now, let's just kind of finish this roof off. We now know where the ridge is going to go, right? So I should be able to come from this midpoint, and it should go right through that area. That's my ridge, right? So let me trim that up. So there's my ridge. This line underneath that's on my main roof, it's underneath my garage roof. Is that really there? Nope. So we can take that off. Okay. So that's going to get trimmed back. So I'll give you a moment to come here and then we're going to kind of run a little quick little exercise. Okay. So there's your look. You just built your second roof. Never even had to fall off a wall. everybody there. Yep, you're exactly right. Just turn that turn that that okay. Yep, that's what we call a crook. Okay. okay, we good? Now let's just stop for a second and let's just run a quick exercise. What if these roofs aren't the same pitch? Can we figure this out without drawing elevation? We can't because it's just geometry. But I always get confused on this. So whenever I have roofs that come in a different pitch, I always draw my 45 degree line because that's going to tell me if I'm right or wrong is that 45 means that the two pitches are the same. Now, how would I go ahead and figure it? Let's figure that this roof right here is climbing at an 812. And let's say that this roof right here 
is going to be at a 612. Where is that intersection going to be? Well, it's opposite of where kind of intuition tells me it would be. Because I think, oh, this one's climbing faster. So I kind of think, you know, that line should be over here because that roof is getting up faster. It actually is just the opposite. Because think of these two as a solid elevation. <coughs> this roof is climbing this way at an 812. Isn't it also climbing up this roof plane at an 812? It's going all directions at an 812, right? This one's coming at 612, but it's also climbing this roof at a 612, this line of intersection. So in essence, what you do is you use the offset command to build this, but you take the pitches and apply it to the other roof. So in essence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line right here, and I'm going to offset this, my 6, because it's the 612 is this rough. I'm going to apply it to climbing up this slope on this one. I'm going to take this line, offset it, what my other rough, this one's climbing, 8. <coughs> now, I can do that just one time, 8 here, 6 here, swing the things out till they intersect, and that's my angle. In essence, what I'm doing here is trigonometry in a plan view. Kind of like drafters get a little lazy with trig. <laughs> it's because we can draw these little tricks that get us there. Now, to show you that angle, let me just kind of show you real quick. I'm going to do an offset of 8, and I'm going to take this one and throw it out. And then I'll do an offset of 6. And if you don't like them this close, then you can always do any increment up. I could do 16 and 12 or 24 and 18, whatever. So then I'm just going to take those two lines and extend them until they meet. So they meet right here. There's my angle from there to there. Okay. So let me just extend that out. Okay, and I'll show you where this would meet if I had those two different pitches. Okay. It would still meet in the middle. So there's a difference in where that would meet. Where this one is my junction between the 8 and the 6, this is my junction between the 8 and the 8. And there's just kind of a trick there, and I always get it wrong. That's why I draw the 45, and I think, you know, that should be going that way if I do my offsets on the wrong roof. Okay, it's just kind of my fail state to catch myself. Go ahead and try that real quick. See if you can't get that to go. Because when you think of these two slopes starting to climb up, what we're trying to draw is this line of intersection between them. Okay. Keep in mind the 812 is climbing up this, and so it's pushing back onto the other one. Okay, it's climbing faster than the 612. So to find that angle, since this one's an 8, it's climbing up this roof right here at an 812. So I offset this one 8. This roof right here is climbing up this way, but it's also climbing this guy at a 612 rate. And so I bring it to 6. So I just take the pitch of the roof and apply it to the one that's not it. Okay, that makes sense. 
So it was going to have 12 as the bottom number? No, well, that's our standard, is to call it a 12, and it doesn't matter if it's inches or feet mm -hmm. or miles. That means it goes up 6 over 12. That's correct. Rise over run. You're going to see that as a reoccurring theme. Um, we use that in civil also, although we change it to a grade, but really it's a rise over run. We call it, uh, most of it driven like Galena, right? 8% road. What does that mean? There you go. That's exactly what it means. And it's just easy numbers to work with, right? Yes, Lisa. Yeah, my, is there an aesthetic reason to change the pitch? Or is there a reason to change the pitch? I mean, it's less root on, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to change it. Yeah, you, maybe you want to drop a roof down. Um, one thing that I think is it, one of the ugliest things I've ever seen is, and you see this a lot with bonus rooms, they have to make this thing wide enough to get a space up here, and they steepen the pitch up, and what happens? Your, your garage roof comes in three feet over the ridge of the main house. Yeah. Okay. It looks pretty weird. Um, it's, I've always kind of laughed at that one. I said, why are you doing that? You know, it, it, I, see, I know why they're doing it. They're doing it to get space. But it looks kind of silly. Um, Would you ever go the opposite way? Instead of like a smaller thing, would you ever want to make it big so you have a little bit more roof space? Um, Lisa, I'll, I'll just answer that this way. I think if you do this long enough, you'll find all scenarios are being used. Right. Especially if you're working up in your country. I know. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, the Flying Wing House. Yeah, I think they sold that. I think they finally sold that. But yeah, there's a pool up there too. Okay, so you guys, are we good on that, on how that works? Is that kind of a nice little truck to know? Yeah, sure. Um, whether you remember it or not, you can always get that same information off of elevations. Now, let's go and confirm. Well, should we throw our little sheds on here real quick? Yes. Okay, we're not going to know where our sheds come in off of this. Okay. Unless we pulled out a calculator, but we're going to use elevations on these. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and throw some sheds on here. Again, we got the same needs. Okay. So I'm going to stick with. Generally, we do that. We stick it all the way constant through a house. Okay. So I know this one, and I'll just run my shed right to the end. Okay, that's up, totally up to you. You don't have to. Now, the one thing I would recommend is we do not know where this shed's going to end on this road. So you're going to want to make yourself a note. We've got to find this joint up here. Because we have to describe all intersections of planes, correct? So I'm just going to take this and throw it up a little bit and leave it kind of dead-ended out here and not show that and know, hey, I've got a, you know, you got a little punch list I gave you yesterday. You might want to go to the roof side and make yourself a note on there. I've got to finish my shed. For this one right here, you're going to want to come off. That's really kind of where you figure it. So it's going to be 18 inches out from there. Okay. So that's going to be your vertical line. Offset that out 18 inches for this little shed that goes on here. What was that? I'll show you if you want to watch me real quick. So when I get ready to shed this guy, I still want my eaves to line up. And I'm going to use this out here to make sure I cover everything. So I'm just going to bring a vertical line out, vertical line out, and then these will be all offset 18 inches. So that one, this one, and then the front of it sits here. Okay. So let me delete my two inside ones, and I'll extend out, trim it up, change my line weights here. And then again, I'm just going to bring these and kind of deadhead them out here in this roof plane somewhere because I don't know where that's really going to happen. 
because we haven't determined a pitch for this or anything. Yeah, I know it's going over the top of it, but I don't know where. Okay, are you ready to move forward a little bit? All right, let, before we leave this, we're going to get ready to head to our elevations and actually try and confirm one of these roofs. But before we leave this, what if I was doing a hip roof? What would change? Remember, a hip roof, all sides slope. If the slopes are the same pitch, how are these intersections going to be? 45 degrees. So if I was doing a hip roof here, instead of a gable, because a gable has a flat end, right? On this end, we got that wall that goes all the way up underneath. If I was doing a gable here, it would look like this. Let me just do some copying. Maybe this guy would go here. And this one goes here. And then the ridge would go, go away. Right? And it would look like this. And that would be my hip on this side. So if I get my elevation and I've got this big massive roof and I don't like it, I can go ahead and hit this and take away some of that mass. I can do a lot of different things here. Obviously the client needs to buy off on all of them. And those are our two predominant ones. All right, let's go to our elevation and let's draw a gable. Um, which one should we do? I think this is the one we did as a class, right? Which is the back view. <laughs> you guys are going, dang. <laughs> do I need to pick a different view? <laughs> which one do you guys want to do? The other one. The, the garage. <laughs> do the garage. Does everybody have the garage edge? No. We do them exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's just kind of benefit as many people as possible. So here's my garage view. How many people have that view? Show of hands. Okay. Three of us. How many people have this view? Okay. How many people have, I don't know, those are the old, we see both pitches, and that's what I'm looking for on those two views. Okay. So just if you have, don't have these, Folks, if you would, just come out here and take a line and draw, just draw a line like eight feet high, it doesn't matter. Offset it 24 feet. Okay, and let's draw the garage. So you can do this just by coming in and drawing a line, and I'll make it 96 high, and I'll just do an offset of 24 feet. There's the outside of my two walls. <clears throat> okay. We good? All right. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to draw the truss in. So, first thing, we're gonna, let's kind of sketch how the eaves going to work. And I'll let me put that other sketch off that I erased. I'll try and draw this with my block. So here's my wall, two by six wall. Let's still do, let's make sure we've got a 12 inch energy drill here. Okay, so we're going to come out 
come out, draw this out. This is going to be my bottom plate. I need a truss that comes, a piece that comes up. And then from there, I'm going to have my slope. And let's do it like this, where we got some tails and we'll box it in later. Now, what I want to do here is I want to do a one foot zero inch energy hill. And that would be from here to the bottom. <coughs> okay. So a heel height is one thing that we always call out on a truss. It includes the board. And the heel height goes from the bottom of the bottom plate to the bottom of the top plate. That's that distance. Okay. This would actually be a, a little incline piece. Going to be sitting in like that. You can kind of see already when you get into trusses, we get a lot of shape, a lot of different shapes and angles, right? Boy, that's what computers at CAD and CNC saws. Yeah, they have saws you can that will load their own boards, put that saw at the right angle, it will cut three angles on it. I mean, because a lot of these, when we come into valleys, they got an angle this way and an angle that way, and they'll just run the board through. And they're off, the, off and going. Pretty cool stuff. At least I think so. All right, that's what we're going to draw. So, first thing we want to do is we're going to come in here and put in our bottom plate. So right now we have the top of our wall, right? So I'm just going to do an offset of that bottom one right here. This is three and a half inches. It's a two by four on edge. And maybe, maybe I'll grab that two by four. Well, you're going to see all of them in edge. Okay, so I'm just going to do an offset of three and a half. Now this is the edge of my roof. So I'm going to extend that up and trim that back. So in essence, I've got this, where I had my finished ceiling line or top of wall. I offset that for my bottom plate of the truss. Okay, now there's a reason we're going to go through this because your fascia is controlled by this and where it's actually going to sit. Okay. I should probably draw that. Okay. Now on that, we're going to have my fascia board sitting right on here. Now, the next thing we need is we need to offset for our heel height, which is going to be 12 inches. So let's do that, and that will come off of the finish or the wall height distance. So I'm just going to do an offset of 12, and offset that one up. Now let's just draw one side. Let's take advantage of mirror. So I'm going to come over here and then draw my little board in. Right. Okay. I'm going to draw on the zero layer here so you can see it a little better. Um, which line did you offset? 12? Okay, I offset the top of my wall because that's the bottom of my bottom plate of the truss. I offset that one up 12 and that's going to be the top of that little piece right there. And how much you offset the Three and a half inches. Because it's a two by four. Now we're drawing the side view of all these trusses here. That's what we're doing. So keep in mind, what I've got is I've got it sitting right there, right? That's the bottom of my truss cord, my bottom cord. This piece here is sitting in just like this. Okay. So you're seeing three and a half inches. 
on those widths. It's, it's a foot tall and three and a half tall. Yep. Now it's a foot from here to there. Top of your wall. Okay. So Remember, you're setting up the heel length. The board yeah. is less three and a half inches. Yeah. Nice, I've still got 18 minutes. I think we're going to finish it. <laughs> okay, does everybody have that in? Do you need more time? All right, let's now we're getting ready to draw this. Again, this will be a three and a half inch board. It's going to be a two by four sitting on here like such, right here. Now, what you need to know is the angle. Okay, how's that thing looking? This roof, we're going to go at an 812. So again, we're going to use the offset, just like I figured out those pitches on that other roof. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come on my outside edge, because that's where it's going to go, and I'm just going to draw a line straight up. Okay. Just go ahead and do that. Draw that line straight up off the outside edge. <coughs> now, you're setting off rise and run. We can do it by angle. We can go to the chart in chapter 22 and draw that angle line. Or you can use the offset command. Because I know it's going 812. This line gets offset 12. This line's my height, offset at 8. Where those two meet out here has to be that angle. So I'll do an offset of 12. That's your horizontal distance. So I offset that one that way. Then I'm going to do an offset of 8, and that is my vertical distance here. Where those two meet, right here, is my angle. So then I can come in and draw 